Welcome to Stories from the 3 Billion Under 30, featuring interviews with world-class millennials as well as the celebrities, Fortune 500 executives, and mentors that guide us. Welcome everyone to yet another episode of Stories from the 3 Billion Under 30. I have my good friend Nick with us, and Nick is just like this uber creative mind. He's one of the top photographers out there. He's done work with everyone from Usher to Justin Bieber to like Lewis Howes and Tony Robbins of the business world. Uh, he sells his art online. He has a very popular talk show. Uh, he's asking me what we're doing right now. I'm telling him that we're literally going to shoot the shit. Uh, Let's if you, do it. If you want to make some art, we can make some art. We can and make some art, whatever you whatever you want. Whatever yeah, you and then once we feel inspired, maybe halfway through the show, we'll get super practical. And uh, I, I kind of want to learn from you about just your creative process overall, like mm -hmm. transcending what you do, you know, whether it's photography, whether it's art, whether it's business even, and how you take like a creative lens into business. I want to learn about your creative process. Um, I want to learn more about how to, how to make it as a creative entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, my my creativity is writing or editing other people's creativity. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> um, and you know, we're trying out a web series as well, and who knows what will come in the future. I'll eventually get on Snapchat and make that a thing. But you've obviously done it very successfully, so kind of want to dig into that. Yeah. Um, and you could, you could feel free to like lead us through maybe a creation of a drawing or a mini painting yeah i mean what i usually <laughs> do the, the art stuff that i do is is a uh, it's all mostly typography driven so i i started this project it was a couple of years ago mm -hmm. um it was it was a hundred day project and i was doing a mastermind with uh, a few people amber ray um who is some somebody very interesting for you probably would be a good interview but she yeah, she's here in New York. Cool. She's an artist and like entrepreneur and she, you know, she writes for Fast Company and all these things. And she did the mastermind with like a group of 12 of us. And we went down to, um, down to Mexico, San Miguel, Mexico. And there was this, there's this girl, part of it, El Luna, who just wrote a book called The Crossroads of Should and Must. Mm. And uh, it's a very good book. You should check it out. Um, it's kind of like, about doing what you m must do versus what society and your parents says, and everybody you, should says you should do. And it kind of walks you through a whole process. Um, but within that mastermind, she kind of proposed this idea of doing a 100-day project. And it was something that Michael Beirut had started, like, had done years ago. And she was like, well, let's take it and do it a second iteration of it and make it a movement. And it really mm -hmm. has become that. Like we kind of pint, we kind of did like a proto, a pre-test, and that's where I did mine. Right. And I was like sitting there, and, and everybody was like jumped on board, and I was like, you know, what can I do? What is one thing that I can do for a hundred days straight, mm -hmm. and not get tired of? Right. And that I could do in two minutes or two hours, you know, because like my schedule is all over the place. I could be like in another country next week, and I have no idea. You know, jobs come up within a couple of weeks and they'll be like, Oh, we need you in Zurich. That happened on, that, <laughs> that happened on a, actually it, that happened. It was, and it was like, I got a call on a Thursday and I'll get back to the project, but I got a call on, on a Thursday and they're like, yeah. So, um, can you shoot Justin Bieber on uh, Wednesday next week in Zurich? And I was and like, you're not gonna say no. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then we like, you know, we had to put to put, put a budget together and do an estimate mm -hmm. and do all this stuff and get that approved before like the actual job was a go. So we put an estimate together, and then it was like Monday night. They were like, okay, you're approved, and I had to buy tickets for Tuesday. <laughs> and I flew out. We flew. I flew overnight to. Um, Flew it left at like 5 p.m. on Tuesday, got to Zurich at like 6 in the morning on Wednesday. We went and pre-lit everything that, that day, set up all the studio lighting and everything. Mm -hmm. And I, and then like stayed there the next, stayed in Zurich that night and then we shot him on Thursday. Right. Um, and it was just kind of like dependent on when he got there. He was like really late and they had to shoot a commercial. Pretty sure Justin Bieber, so. <laughs> yeah. <it is. laughs> Everyone's waiting on him. Yeah, so here we go and I, sh I shoot two campaigns in a matter of 15 minutes. Oh and my God. that's all the time that I had 
with him. But since I'm friends with Scooter and like I'm part of like the family, like he yeah. was friendly to me, like we were cool and it was it was pretty easy, pretty seamless. But you bring that up to say like you had this hundred day challenge and you still had to get that done. Yeah. So you know whether I'm doing this. You were happy. Yeah, whether or not I'm flying to Zurich in two days, I still gotta be able to, you know, take whatever I'm doing and do that yeah. hundred day project. And so your challenge was doing typography related art. Yeah, so my challenge was like, okay, what can I do with that I can do within that time frame? I was like, well, I'd kind of already been started, I had already started kind of thinking about doing, like exploring typography and calligraphy, mm -hmm. stuff like that, but I never really, I didn't really do much with it. And then I was like, well, this is the perfect opportunity to really kind of jump into that. And so I chose that as my project and I did it for a hundred days straight. Nice. And, um, and what, was, what did you learn from that experience, number one? And number two, can we do that in <laughs> like the two minute version today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be yeah. awesome. Maybe we'll ask like Jason what your like favorite inspirational quote is so we can like make that. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and, that, and that was the thing was like, I had kind of gone through this whole emotional intelligence and leadership training for a couple of years and it kind of expanded my mind into this space of, um, you know, positive thinking and and because your mind is who you are, and if you can think more positive and think higher, you know, kind of shape your thinking, then you're gonna grow more as a person. You're gonna be able to execute more. Yeah. You're gonna be doing bigger things, and so I wanted to kind of bring that into the art, into the typography, and so that's kind of always been a, a big part of the art. I mean, if you can see around here, everything kind of has a message to it. Everything right. is like, it's almost a catalyst for thought, um, but in a really cool way. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, how do you make it look cool and inspiring? You want to hang it on your wall. Yeah. Um, so... So yeah, that's kind of where that that whole thing. So I started doing all these. I would do like a quote a day, an inspirational quote a day, mm -hmm. and I, it's, it's an experiment. Like you can see it online, the hashtag Onkin Onkin draws type on Instagram, and you can actually see like the the whole progression from when I started to where it is now. And I kind of really like brought in, you know, it's kind of become this like more signature. What, uh, what look? What did that teach you? And. and... What did it teach you that, you know, someone at home could do themselves other than a hundred day challenge, but like why, let, let's go deeper maybe into why someone should do a hundred day challenge and then what, yeah. what you learn from that experience. Yeah. Well, it's funny. So I learned a, that I could do it, you know, I'm, especially in this day and age, I'm like, so AD, ADD, I'm like, well, but I'll, I'll start a as, and especially as an entrepreneur, you know, you're like, oh, I'll start it. Yeah, that's the worst. And then I never finish, you know, it's, it's like, I start so many, I have like, you know, 10 started books, but I like finishing them is like a whole other story. So this actually taught me that I can, you know, I have the, have it in me to finish mm -hmm. a project like that. Secondly, by doing one thing, you know, by doing it every day, and just even if it's like two minutes, you're incrementally like getting better. Right. And you're like, and then at the end of that, you know, 100 days, I have this whole body of work. Then you're really good at producing more of that body of work. Yeah, yeah. And I'm learning, and you know, I learn and I understand the tools, I understand what I'm doing a lot more. It's an experiment, so I get to see like how different, you know, I can use like this as, a, as an ink and then I can use like India ink with a different pen. But I, feel like, pen. I feel like you kind of knew that a little bit beforehand because you've built up such a, a body of work in the photography world and the art world and as an entrepreneur. Uh, it just sounds like this is something that helped you reach a new level or kind of like kickstart that feeling again. Yeah. Of like, you know, continuing to learn, which then is allowing you to go from someone in like the top 2% of to the top like 0.2%. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I think it's always good to be constantly learning and experimenting right. and, and with art as a, as a creative entrepreneur in general, like art is a journey and it takes a while before from when you start to be able to develop it to the point where people are paying you for it. And, and that's a whole different, that's a whole different ball game. And now I'm starting to actually get 
commissioned to do paint, <laughs> to paint this stuff to paint the quotes on right. walls and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. installing and it like in different like incubators and accelerators or yeah just anywhere really yeah i just did a <clears throat> huge you know 25 foot space uh on the uh there's a 3,000 square foot workout studio in uh on fifth avenue here in new york is it equinox no i oh can't no. <laughs> it's this place called Bandier, <laughs> which is a women's uh, athletic wear company, and they, they just opened a new flagship store, and they wanted yeah. me to paint it. So we did huge letters, sweat speaks louder than words, um, on the Amazing. walls. So Can you walk, like, I, I'm going to go back to, like, making something off, off like, partly selfish interest, but um, yeah. can you walk us through, like, a creative process, and um, maybe Jason can give us some inspirational quotes or an inspirational quote to, like, do stuff with <laughs> yeah you just like find quotes and stuff whether it be conversations whether it be yeah. books or podcasts or I sometimes I'll just go search online and I think the whole idea is to find something that resonates with me for that day that I feel like I'm wanting to like embody or feel like inspires me and then I'll do that quote um, and a lot of times people like reach out on Instagram or comment or whatever and they'll like give you inspiration well that or those be like oh my god i really like, needed to hear that today like that was Got it. you know so that was pretty cool to like as through the process it was cool to see how the project is impacting mm -hmm. people um, so so to recap it was like step one source inspiration and then for this project you were just getting your favorite quotes or people were like giving you yeah, so the first step, quotes. yeah, definitely. The first step was to Gar gather inspiration. Gather inspiration. <laughs> and for me, for this project specifically, it was more about finding a quote, that an inspirational quote that resonates with right. me for that day or that time. Because sometimes I'll just be like searching through and I'm like, no, no, like I had like, sometimes I'll write quotes down if I'm like somewhere and I'll like put it in my phone just mm -hmm. like I did there. And then when I'm that day, like if I feel like that's, resonating with me then i'll i'll do a, right. a piece out of it cool um, i have a bet uh, <laughs> yeah. what is it chase your happy chase your happy i like that okay let's do it let's try that want to make it a lot easier and <laughs> like your longest one has like five words <laughs> chase your happy that's a good one we could do by the way, I've made like two paintings my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> so the second one, oh, and we can actually let you try this after. Um, the second thing is to kind of choose, pick your medium. I mean, for me, you know, I bought, I, I like kind of watercolor or mixed medium paper, um, which is kind of what I found to be, it absorbs the ink the most. And this is going through like so many different, I mean, you know, yeah. I try it, you know, I have this pen, which is kind of like a brush pen which I like as well. I have these tin, these pens made of aluminum tin that you dip in India ink. And then I have these, this is like a crank. These are like graffiti yeah. paint. Um, so like we just did. You knew a lot of this before your 100 day project or this is no, like part this is of the all exploration? Part, yeah, this is part of the 100 day project. It's just exploring different mediums. Like I did this yesterday with the Holsti guys or for the Holsti. Um, nice. And I, so I used, I used these. You know, completely different, um, different piece or different type of work, type of. Just live your dream and share your passion. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then this has kind of been one of my favorites. We can, we'll, we'll do a couple, exper a couple, uh, a couple of tests here. So sometimes I like that. Uh, sometimes I'll do it in one take. Sometimes I'll do like, it'll take like two or three. Right. Um, and sometimes I like to do different colors. And the goal was just to make, right? It wasn't, you don't need to be perfect. There is no such thing as perfect. Yeah. Perfect, it, perfect was doing something that day. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is about doing. And I think part of it is, um, part of the enjoyment is, is some of the accents are happy. You know, and I think a lot of art becomes, um, is made out of mistakes. Mm -hmm. Like some of the best, some of my, some great photos I've taken are just like accidents. Right. So this, so I'll just, I, I just kind of dip this and then this pen's cool. Oh wow. And then I can just 
decide to like do a different color. I'll clean that out. You wouldn't think it's a pen. You would think you could like kill someone with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, can I take these on the plane? <laughs> I have, so that's that's a good thing. Hmm. Questionable security. <laughs> What I love about this, uh, this, this size of pen is it like splatters. Yeah. It's almost like a, a purposeful mistake. Yeah. Move my knee. <laughs> what do you think, Jason? I like it. You got, you got Chase, you're happy here, guys. Chase, you're happy. <laughs> Hashtag. Chase, you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it, it, it's different. Like, I'll experiment around. Sometimes I'm like, well, I didn't like the way that was laid out, or I screwed up a letter. Yeah. And so I'll just, like, I'll just do it again. So let's, um... Do you want to try it? I can, yeah. Cool. Um, so you can choose... I usually like to use these two, because they're about... They're the easier things, and when you put it down... You know, you want to make sure that the this is the, the edge that's like the ink is coming out of. Okay. Um, and then cool. this is like a little bit more smaller and precise. Am I doing Chase You're Happy as well? Or am I doing something else? I um, have something that you came up with. Hmm. You can do what you want. You can Chase Your Happy if you want as well. It can be totally like promotional and do like 3 billion under 30. Like, <laughs> hashtag. Probably trying to go bigger there, right? There you go. See so, yeah, how the more you kind of turn it like this, it'll give you a different surface area. Yeah. <laughs> take, take, take some take some practice. So you're you're saying I gotta put this side down? Uh, more. It's more like other. this. It's like this part of the breath of the. Uh huh. So like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's harder than it. <laughs> yes. He ran out of space. <laughs> I'll just go down here. What's the oh, three, three billion B, under thirty? Three B U three zero. <laughs> yeah, you know, talk about branding, like some people say this is the greatest name. Some people, me included, I don't know if it's the best name ever. Because it's awkward hashtags. I guess what, I, I don't know, what's the three billion interp under 30. interpretation of it? There's three billion people in the world, 30 and under. Got it. Yeah. I fucked it up, I might as well. <laughs> Add some stripes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You're an artist. There you go. But I did it. I'm like, I bet if I did this for 100 days. If you did it for 100 days, It'd you, would, turn out half you would really start to understand like, oh, this is how I have to like hold the pen. This is how I have to dip the ink. <laughs> <laughs> so, this, so the lesson in all this is, yeah. that, is that, yeah, it takes time to like practice. And the 100 day project is actually something that it was a cat. It was a uh, platform to be able to practice. So I guess let's talk about maybe step three, at least in my eyes, would be like distributing this art if you wanted to, <laughs> uh, and then that ties into you being a creative entrepreneur and actually living and making money off of your work as a photographer, as an artist, etc. Yeah. So you know how how did you go about growing your photography business? How did you go about sharing some of these creations if you wanted to sell them um, even with your podcast how did you go about amplifying that you, know, you, you decided what inspiration you wanted to pull you decided you want to interview you know a certain type of person or you wanted to interview a certain type of person for a certain type of lesson to share with the audience you yeah. decided you wanted to take a certain type of photography 
Yeah, so you, you pick your inspiration, you, you chose a medium, whether it's photography, mm-hmm. whether it was business, whether it was um, your podcast. And now we're talking about distribution and like sharing that with the world. You know, how, how have you gone about that and what has been the best ways to amplify your work yeah. that you found? Well, I think this probably would take a little bit of a rewind because when I started photography, it wasn't, we didn't have social media, you know, if social media wasn't, it was MySpace, mm-hmm. you know, it wasn't what it is today. Right. So, but even before that, I went to school for graphic design and I did graphic design for five, around five years and I was doing, you know, I do like basic brochure type websites kind of towards the end of that because the web was just getting into mm-hmm. that space. And then... Um, I jumped into photography because it was fun. Digital kind of hit the hit the uh, hit the market, and it was you know quality enough imagery yeah. and technology to be able to do it. I remember you were telling me at the the dinner party we met at that you caught that trend early on, and you were able to build up enough skill in it to when it was like taking off. Yeah, you, you were one of the it people to go to. Yeah, I was. That was like right before I was on the early end of the digital tip. Right. which is great because I was a little bit of ahead of everyone and kind of jumped into this whole like lifestyle photography, which is what you see so much of today. It's just like great mm-hmm. pictures of people doing, you know, everyday life type of things, uh, which is what a lot of advertising companies use. And so, sure. you know, I hustled for years. Um, you doing all right? Do. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> little stuff that we can, like maybe the the tips or the, the things that you've done that have been able to amplify your work most, so like, like more of a step-by-step, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like something that anyone watching can potentially replicate. I mean, they're not going to replicate five years of learning a very specific craft <laughs> that you were on the, the cutting edge of, but maybe they can replicate identifying a trend that they think will be big in three to five years and yeah. becoming the best maybe, at that. And maybe to help out with that, like think of someone like me, not the straw man myself, but um, you know, I, I make videos, I know the technical side of things and stuff, I do marketing and stuff, but it's like, I understand there's a huge difference between like, I'm making YouTube videos and you know, just starting this project with Jared and having somebody call me to go shoot Justin Bieber in two days. <laughs> right, because right. like, because they thought of you, and I think that's one of the big key things is how do you make that brand for yourself? How do you make that name for yourself? Where it's like, and this is me selfishly having asked you the question, but, <laughs> um, you know, how do you make it that other people say that's the guy I want to do this? Yeah, because everybody's shooting video, everybody can. No offense to you, but most people have the access to be able to go get canvas, paint something, do calligraphy or do typography and stuff. Mm-hmm. So what makes them call you? Yeah. And how do you get there? And I think that would make for a good story. Got it. Good question. Um, yeah, I, can, I, you know, I think that's kind of where I was headed with this is that to get there, there's a lot of hustle that's not just photography. Like right. during that five years, I was first thing is building portfolio. So create amazing work, you know, especially photography wise. I mean, I say I I, I talk more on the photography side of things because that's like what I that's, built the business yeah. doing, you know. And this stuff is like a little bit side hustle and like fun. It's starting to turn into money now, mm-hmm. but the photography world that's where I'm like more known and that's yeah. what I've got going on. So like first thing is that I've spent five years grinding at was just making a better portfolio and creating a style that people that that is seamless across the board. Where like they're like, Oh, I I'm I need a photographer that is like does kind of like fun lifestyle, you know, beautifully lit images you got to create the portfolio that shows that. Mm-hmm. So to do that, you know, you got to basically, that comes down to, you got to sh- shoot better work, create better work, and show more people. So first thing you got to work on is creating the portfolio that you, that's going to garner that, that people are going to come to you for. And that takes a long time. That journey that I was telling you about, you know, took me a good 
couple years, a few right. years before I even got, I got a call for Nike and then it took me even two or three more years after that before I started to yeah. get other jobs like that. So it might start with the uh, like a hundred day project type thing, but then it's like, how do you go from day 101 to 1000 or day exactly. 101 to 10,000? Exactly. Or, or not, maybe not day, but act or take. Yeah. And I mean, hey, maybe that, maybe a hundred day project is a good way to like, to motivate yourself to do this and mm -hmm. to like create a portfolio piece every day. It may not be the best thing, right. but at the end of a hundred days, you're gonna have, you're gonna be able to pick 10 images out of that hundred sure. that you created and use that for your portfolio. So, you know, I think a good way, a good exercise that I tell people in, in photography and, and with any art is to go through magazines, go through, especially online, you can go online and find, just cruise Tumblr and cruise like, different websites and pull imagery that you're attracted to you know there's something about that photo that you love and start pulling all that stuff and then look through that group of images and be like and and think about okay what are the common themes here do i, I like the lighting i like the the styling of the model i like the model I like the casting i like the way that this is directed i like the moment i like the narrative whatever it is and start thinking about that stuff because then you can pour that into your own work Right. And you can use that to create your portfolio. And then you go out and you create your own shoots over and over and over again so that you have a body of work to put together in a portfolio. And nowadays it's, it's great because you can get a website for $10 a month yeah. and build yourself a portfolio and get that in front of more people. And you know, for me to get into the, the paid side of things, there's a whole demographic. <clears throat> and I think with every business or every part of photography there there's a different business structure around it so you know people that shoot weddings that's a whole different consumer side of the business and you're marketing to, the, to people and that commercial and advertising photography and editorial there's a whole different business to business business around that so for me that's what I wanted to do and to get my name out there, I created a website. That was the first thing. And on your website, you want to focus on one thing, you know, not just one thing, but one style. And that's what people are going to know you for. So the mm -hmm. more people are seeing that, the more people are going to come to you for that. You know, they're like, oh, they'll think of you. If you do try to do everything, they'll be like, I don't really know what that guy does yeah. uh, it works for smaller markets. Like if you're in a small town and like you're trying to get every whatever kind of business you can, then that's where it's going to be. But for me, I wanted to play like on a big, big scale. I work nationally and internationally. So, right. you know, I get jobs from Chicago, from LA, from Seattle, from New York, you know, and it doesn't even matter. Like from Zurich. And, yeah. <laughs> but that job came from Brazil. So that was a Brazilian right. agency for, and they like the job was for Motorola, but Justin was in Zurich. So they, Ever they flew the whole crew That's insane. to Zurich to shoot Justin in be on a day in between his tour dates. But it's not, it's, to me, yeah, there's a creative genius that you have that's obvious, especially if, like, people were in your apartment. But it seems like the two things that really helped you become world-class are just the consistency around your work. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to focus on this style in this type of market. And I'm just gonna do it for however long it takes to be yeah. world class. Uh, that was the biggest thing that I'm seeing from you. And then, yeah, you've been crafty in how you position yourself or what type of shot you take. But you make sure it's high quality, and then you make sure you do a shit ton of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kind of like there's. It seems like there's no shortcuts to being world class. You know, anyone can do a, a hundred day challenge, or anyone can take an, an Instagram photo and go from zero to 80% probably really quickly, mm -hmm. but to go from 80% to 98 or 80%, like 98 to 99 yeah. and be world-class, you know, that kind of takes this like whole new beast yeah. of consistency. And I, <laughs> I feel like you lost a lot of your competitors in that, in that trench. Yeah. Yeah. Like the 80 to 99 trench. Exactly. Well, and it's that thousand, uh, the 10,000 hour rule yeah. that is, part myth, part true, I think. I mean, I think because it took me, you know, a good five years of practicing and working on my portfolio before people really started to hire me to that level. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I think you can probably accelerate it faster now, but it, I don't think you can escape it. It's definitely accelerated because of access to technology and information. Right. So, but you still can't escape it. Like you have to. You have to put in the work. Yeah. That's down. That's like literally like what you have to do is just yeah. day in and day out. And I think that's the thing that keeps a lot of people from mm -hmm. success is just not doing it, not not creating. And right. um, I don't know if you read the the book, The War of Art. I mm -hmm. haven't. It's by Stephen Pressfield, a really good book, and he talks a lot about the the resistance, and it's the resistance is like that inner voice that's just like, oh, just go watch TV, don't create. And so time goes by, and you're just doing other things, you're getting distracted, um, and the whole idea is to push through that, and to keep creating every day, and, and eventually you will get noticed for that or, right. you know if you, you know and then the other thing is packaging your work right um, so you have the creative creation of the work and the consistency of that because like I said it's a journey to get to the point where your work is of quality where people are gonna pay you for it mm -hmm. um, and for me I just kept going and going and going you know and I would go on and you know I built my portfolios um, it was like an actual physical book uh, which I could probably show you. Um, we could probably like look at it. Yeah, sure. Um, and uh, and then I was going on meetings. You know, I, I would go to ad agencies and show my portfolios and just do meetings and meet people and meet people and meet people and show my book. And then you get you kind of see people's reactions. And then like, because editing the book is a whole other yeah. <laughs> side of things to get to to inspire people to hire you. Right. Um, so the other side of it is show more people. So you have the web, you can create a website, that's like a portal, and then you gotta build up relationships and you go on meetings and show people your portfolios and and get them and get to know them so they have a face to the name and then mm -hmm. you know part of it's branding, you know, getting a visual brand together so right. that and then your name out there. Um, I mean we do email marketing and print promotion print marketing stuff like that we send that out I have an agent now yeah. they're doing portfolio shows so you know getting your name and your work out there um, is, is the key yeah so I guess to, to wrap up you know people know you for your photography work all around the world and they come to you for that you know you've been in the trenches you you're at world-class stage and I'm sure you're, you're continuing to work on that so you can go even yeah. farther um, what are you working on in addition that maybe we can help amplify and bring awareness to that you might be in the trenches on right now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would say like my podcast is, is a growing, you know, piece of the brand that I started a couple of years ago and it's going really well now and I think a, a matter of, I, I want to create a channel through that mm -hmm. to inspire people to create their lives and, and and to interview people that are doing that for themselves and right. uh, you know that's kind of future forward looking at kind of taking that into a book format and also creating a lifestyle brand of product to go around it mm -hmm. um, the art stuff as well is kind of what I've been slowly working on so bringing everything I'm slowly bringing everything all together right under one umbrella and yeah. one, one I know I think I know the umbrella can, can we share it or is that like a on the DL kind of thing? Um, which umbrella are you talking about? <laughs> the colorful one? The neon? Oh yeah, neon, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's... Is that is that the umbrella you're talking about? As um, far as like, creating a lifestyle brand that encompasses... Well, like, it's actually a piece there... of the umbrella. Oh, so the... shit. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the umbrella is, is me and my brand. Right. Um, neon is kind of like the, the extension and the, and the product and okay. like that. So, and, and then like the more legacy piece. So taking other people's, other influencers, other people that are creating good in the world and, and kind of helping put out their message right. um, and creating product around that. Um, and then I'm sure there's like a lot of other things I want to add to Neon, but you know, it's kind of an evolving right. thought process at this point, you know, there's some things that are online now, but we're slowly integrating and, and building. But if, if anyone watching were to take a next step to learn about you, you'd probably want them to go check out your podcast. Yeah, check out the podcast. I think that's going to be like the main source of um, finding out about all the stuff coming up. Like sign up for the newsletter on my site mm -hmm. um, and we'll be sending out 
updates yeah. on on new happenings, new podcasts. I mean, we've got guests like Usher and Scooter Braun, and I just did Daniel Arsham and all kinds of cool people on there. So yeah, and what what are the links for that so we can include it? Uh, yeah, shoptalkradio.com is the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, photography website is nickonken.com, N-I-C-K-O-N-K-E-N, -E as people tend to mix that up. And You're going to get lost in his website, by the way. <laughs> his like, scope of work is insane, and I'm slowly starting to meet some of the personalities that you've covered, like Coco and Breezy. Yeah. It's just like... It, you you do a good job of capturing people as they are yeah. so like their personality almost jumps out of a, a photograph into real world or into mm -hmm. perception uh i'm trying to articulate that as creatively as i can <laughs> but no yeah. you, you do a good job and obviously there's like a huge scope of work you can get lost in that site but, <laughs> yeah. uh shop talk uh nickonkin.com I'd say Instagram is at Nick Onken. Uh, I post a lot of new stuff. I post. I'm. I'm st I've still continued the the hundred day project. Not every day, but I do it every few days or weeks or something. Like that. Yeah, I think we're on like two hundred and forty or something. Now. Okay. Um, so I finished hundred days and I kept kept it going, just not consecutively, because um, it's still fun. Yeah. It's still like a fun project that I'm I'm enjoying and it's taking me to new dimensions. Well. I want to challenge all of you to take a 100 day project do a 100 day project share it in the comments you know figure out something whether it's a photograph a day whether it's drawing something each day whether it's making a sales call each day <laughs> <laughs> pick a 100 day challenge and let's let's all do it together yeah absolutely. so thanks for your time uh i my don't know if I want to keep this or not. It's, it's pretty, but not that pretty. It's all, it's all you. You can take this home. You're like, I don't want this shit. Maybe we can auction this guy. You can give it away to your, uh, to your listeners, viewers. Yeah. No, we can actually do a really cool like giveaway for it. Cool. Um, chase your happy. Chase Thank your you, happy. Thank you, Jason. Uh, yeah. And create yeah. your moments. <laughs> Anything else? Um, that's it. Create your moments. Create your life. Cool. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. Thank you for watching another episode of Stories from the 3 Billion Under 30. Now, if you want to see more stories from the 3 Billion Under 30, we actually have a book coming out in January called 3 Billion Under 30. And if you go and click the link in the description below, you can get three free stories from the next book right now, not in January now. So check it out and follow the rest of the web series in order to see more interviews just like this one.